Look, look they just, uh, now, without giving, a, giving away a bunch of stuff, because you know you can't. Look up because it, we want everybody else to win. It's not because we're a cult. It's because of mass. It's, it's because they want people in the mass to experience it for them. Let me tell you something about Bethany. Bethany has been to more mass events with me. But it was always the stuff. Y'all will find out on your day of deeper understanding. You'll find out what's been going on on the outside while y'all are on the inside. Bethany's been with me for years on the outside. She's never been on the inside. And so she got a chance to experience the inside. And as a matter of fact, I left it alone. I didn't even show up. And so I, she got the full amazing experience on the inside that she's never had before, and she loved it. So, so again, it's not uh, it's nothing some big secret, except for when we ride the mule backwards. Other than that, <laughs> uh, uh, but, but but what I'm saying is the mass is such an awesome thing that you have to experience it. Don't try to even understand it. You have to experience it. It's not about religion, and it's not about a denomination. It's all about agape and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's it. Is that all right? That's all, that's all it's about. All the people spend there, y'all can say amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. We got one getting ready to go. He getting ready to find out. Brett's going to find out about it. And, and maybe we can, if we talk to him sweet enough, we can get Dudley to go. Don't beat him up, but just sweetly, <laughs> sweetly talk to him and see if we can get him because there's enough room for the men for him to get on. Do you think there's still room for somebody? They yes, ma'am. The other night, I had talked to the man that works on our car. And when I, at, when I talked to the person that I was sending the application in, she said, you know, they weren't taking anymore. Well, they don't. They announced the other night. That they are. There's nine. They said nine said spots. Nine spots. No, they're, ta they're taking more men. I need to get in touch with them. Yes, yes. I'll just tell Dudley that dog biting deal that ain't hurt half the best deal if I play. <laughs> So good, ladies. Without saying too much, the ladies that win, y'all want to just say a little, like a little five minute or less thing. The ladies that win, y'all. How many is here to win? There, there's uh one, two, three, three, three that went in here right now. Y'all want to say something? Go ahead. Say just say a little, little something, a couple of sentences, without giving away about the mules that we ride backwards. <laughs> Hold on tight when they kick. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Hold on. That's awesome. Hey, when you blindfold reaching that box of snakes, you're going to be getting a poison. Uh, also, make sure that you get on the mule from the left side. You get them from the right side, he kicks. <laughs> okay, we'll go, so what, go ahead. I mean, there's, there's really no words. It's just. It's an amazing. It's a present that everybody needs to open themselves. That's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That was excellent. That was excellent. Y'all need to write that down. <laughs> it's, it's a present. I'm trying to write it so I can read it when I have to drive. <laughs> ain't no way. Try <laughs> printing, Dad. Uh, the, pastor yeah, writes, <laughs> the pastor writes in tongues. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Like Annie. Yeah. <laughs> Open for themselves. Okay. That it? That it? Is it? Is it through? Yes, yes. Okay, Vicki? Hmm? Give us a little uh, something. Just a little spree something. Well, except for that, you know, 48 hours I didn't want to talk. <laughs> I was good. <laughs> Um, you know, there are things that you'll never look at the same. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It gives you a different perspective on things. A good perspective, too, and a godly perspective. It's like going to a revival. Mm -hmm. It lasts just two months or a month or something, mm -hmm. and you get it in a short time. Yeah, even though you're there only from Thursday to Sunday, mm -hmm. one part of it feels like you're only there for a couple hours, and the other part feels like you've been there for weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because they take you, they take your watch away and they take you they take your your phone away. But somebody's gonna be able to get it with you. It's not like it's like I mean I was always able to get it with Benny had a right. family emergency. I got right up with Benny immediately. We prayed and God took care of the situation now right then. <coughs> and got it with me and I got it. They got it with me and me and the uh, uh, all week. Yeah, so whatever, 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 you, people can get up with. It's not like we're going to catch you hid and nobody's going to get to you. It's just, if you're always trying to look at your clock and look at your look at your watch and look at your phone, you can't get it. You can't get this. You know, I, I watch every Sunday. I see people going. 
And I, I could say, you know, I'm, we're giving away free hundred dollar bills to the next three people to raise their hand, and, and everybody can look and wait for them to raise their hand. They're still going. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm saying, you know, and, and, and what's so bad is I got to go to the bathroom, come back, and I see them, and they see me, and it's still going. <laughs> Sometimes playing games, you know. So, so again, you, you get that. You can't do that in a mass. A mass is they want your attention, and once you see what's going on, you want to give them your attention. You do not want to take your eyes off of it. You don't miss your phone or your watch or anything. You don't care about any of that. Wait a minute. I did miss my watch. I missed my watch and my Weather Channel app. That's what I didn't mention. I didn't miss the phone ringing. I didn't miss any of those stuff. My watch and the Weather Channel app. But what I really found amusing is like the second day we were there, one of the girls at the table with me, she goes out to the t goes out front during a break and she says, I'm going to go get me some coffee. She said, because I'm getting sleepy. It was after lunch and we'd eat. And I said, I, I'm going to wander out there in a minute. Before I got out there, she come back and she says, you're going to love the coffee pot. I said, why is that? She said, because it says, coffee was fresh at 11.59. Like we have a reference for that. <laughs> 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 and you have no idea why the hood is 11.59 for us. <laughs> But it was fresh, then. But it was fresh, then. <laughs> did it even say A.M. or P.M.? No. <laughs> no. No, it was fresh that long ago. Yeah. That would be it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe yeah. that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Could have been overnight. And my best advice yeah. for anybody that hasn't been, carry tissues. Carry lots of tissues. <laughs> they, 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 they provide them. They provide them. It's like, like one day they ran out. On her table. Our table ran out. The preacher was preaching on uh, at the, when you wind up, if you wind up in hell, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And one woman looked at him and said, she didn't have any teeth. She says, what about me, Pastor? I ain't got any teeth. He said, don't worry, they'll be provided. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a lady a while ago tell something. Of, this lady is 93 years old. Yeah. She's friendly. She's famous. She said, said, they went to church, and the preacher got a prayer preaching. He said, I feel today like somebody in the congregation is going to give $1,000. And if they do, we'll let them pick out the hymns today. <laughs> he did that about three times. Finally, this little lady in the back raised her hand. He said, Sister, are you going to give three thousand? I mean, $1,000 today? I most certainly am, preacher. She said, well, he said, well, you can pick out the hymns. Go ahead. She stood up and said, Him? <laughs> now this is like a 92, 93 year old oh, lady yeah. telling us this Oh yeah. Oh, that same 90 year old woman was running her mouth at Walmart. So I went and walked beside her and kept putting toilet paper in her uh, <laughs> in, in her in her uh, basket. When she got to the checkout line, she had like, I don't know, 10 things of toilet paper. And something, I, I was just walking while she was talking, I was putting stuff, and she wasn't paying attention, I was picking stuff up <laughs> and putting it in her basket, so she got to check out, she said, what's all this, and why do I got so much toilet paper? <laughs> yeah, I got a preacher friend, that, uh, he says, he'll catch his wife, and he'll put a case of beer in <laughs> send, send it, and she'll put it up to the rest. What? What about that? <laughs> all right, so we're talking about uh, who else? Was that it? No, Bethany. 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 Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. It shows a lot of amazing love. God be loved. Yeah. Yes. Really it, it, it showed me stuff that I... That, that, it was like, it, it, if you... If you're already knowing God's love, and you think you, you, you know it... Uh -huh. But the reason we don't tell it, it's almost impossible to put in words. Yeah, it is. It's so sweet. It's yeah. the sweetest it's, thing. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen guys hate it in the very first hour, yeah. and at the and at the, they're staying away from everybody, and they're pushing their arms length, and by Sunday they're holding arms, they're they're crying, they're they're they're, they're you know. Saturday, a lady at my table said, "I just want to be honest with you, ladies. I'm going to leave here feeling the same way I do right now." Oh, and before we left, she changed her story. And she was angry at God. Yeah. 
It's, ama it's amazing because <clears throat> some of y'all heard the story and, and, and some of you may not have, but, and, but uh, I was going to go and, and Lenny Rice was dying. And I got the call from uh, Roxanne that Lenny was not going to make it to the weekend. And I said, well, I can't go to Emmaus if he's going to be dying. And so, I mean, if they think he's going to die, I want to be there with him. And I said, are you sure? They said, we're sure. And so I, Brother Hasep was coming. So Brother Hasep held a service here Sunday morning. I went to, went to uh, Lenny. And the next day, I stopped to get some gas. And she and Roxanne called me up and said, uh, said, don't pray for Lenny anymore. Just for God to take him. And I said, what kind of prayer is that? And she said, Lenny asked me, could he go home? And I said, okay. And before I, I said, I'm on the way to your house right now. Before I get to the house, he had died. Well, and so it was perfect for me to be there at that time. So six months later, I go to a. Better late than never. That's fine. Come on. But, but right. how do y'all do, do Why, why did y'all do it a mess when somebody came in late? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> she got to, she got to say her thing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to let her say something. Yeah. Okay. So Lenny, so, so Lenny, I mean, six months later, I'm at Emmaus, and it's the first day. They did things different then. The very first day is Friday, and I really weren't feeling it, and I was thinking, I'm not sure if I want to be here or not. And they come give me this bag of letters, and I opened this letter, and the very first one to open it said, Hey, bro. And the only person that called me bro was Lenny. And it said, You and I have walked a long ways together. And I want to thank you for letting me share your faith through this journey, but I'm tired and I want to go home. And it said, but thank you so much for being there. And it tore me up. I got crying so hard that all the guys got around the table. And they made sure they were going to do CPR on me, I think. And, and from that time on, the mass was just... But that they saved that letter from six months before. And it was like, so it was like Lenny was sitting right there beside me although he was dead. And so, yeah. All right, Lenny, we've been saying it for just, just, just a sentence or two. And don't give away any secrets. Don't talk about the mule, ride the mule backwards or anything like that. She said, for the best day of the day. Yeah. She could say it again. That's like a present that everybody needs, though. That's right, yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Well, I've made so many excuses for not going over the years. And I realized it was. Fear of the unknown that I didn't want to go. Well, I know one thing, it really helped her, so. <laughs> 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 you know why you need to go. Yeah, when you had a guard and said, I love you, and kissed me, I knew something really. Oh, boy, that was something you need to mark down. But it's a lot of fun. Go ahead. It's just. It's just a wonderful thing. And it's like you said, uh -huh. if anybody says that they didn't get enough, then they're crazy. That's, That's right. 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 That's right. Right. Because do you know, I have not had a piece of chocolate since I've been home. I haven't had no sweets. I had no desire for sweets. But it was wonderful. I just, there's no way you can do it. Yeah. And I'm so glad. She apologized to me in front of that whole crowd, son. <laughs> I saw that. Me a hard I saw that. I heard that. I was about right there crying. Were you shocked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but Stephen, I'll tell you what, we all think a lot of So keep on doing the great thing. Do it to him then, Stephen. I mean, Stephen, you got to do it to him then. He said keep on doing it. That's right. right. And I'm ready for him to go next month because I, so I can talk. Okay, we, can, we, can right. we got a spot <laughs> saved for our attention. Look, look, Dudley. There, there were no spots open. They reopened them. So there's a few spots open. And 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 I know somebody that can pull some strings. And if you still can't get in, you can get in. Okay? Because we, we, we took care of some more strings getting pulled. So you just go ahead. We got some space saved. I got somebody I'm going to go and get your You can't, you can't, you can't. I don't want to be the only one from the church. Every, every, everybody that goes, I've had to ask everybody that went, I had to ask them two, three, four, five, six, seven times before they would go. Uh -huh. And once they go, they're going, why did I wait so long? That's right. Uh -huh. I, I thought he was sending me to an occult. <laughs> I really did. I, he wouldn't tell me nothing about it. He wouldn't explain nothing. And I said, what kind of 
you have a caller. You sent him to. See, you guys come back home with me. Okay. All right, there you go. All right, y'all, y'all heard it. Tell it to you guys. All right. We'll take care of somebody. You going to take care of it? Yeah, I'll take care of it. I'll just take care of it. Landon. Landon. Lay registration. Make sure you don't send him off the cell phone because he'll have you come after him that first night. I'm sure. Okay. So that means I'm going on a cruise and going on a walk. Yes, you are. At the same time, <laughs> look, and you got to get make sure you board the donkey from the left side. Yeah. <laughs> and the bathrooms are outside. That's all right. And they got some. They got some. I'll wear my baseball spikes. You know what Linda went asked? Linda, y'all, have y'all might have heard about something? But my Linda went, and she went in the, in the fall. And, they, and she kept hearing how she was going to be a pilgrim, how she was going to be a pilgrim. Her sponsor kept saying, you're going to be a pilgrim, you're going to be a pilgrim. So my Linda dressed up in a pilgrim outfit and had a horn of plenty. And when she, and when she got there, the ladies that were working at Love Walt thought that she was a Mennonite. <laughs> I hear about it all the time. Your wife, the Mennonite. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and let's do this, okay? Uh, uh, we had some fun. We're gonna have some more fun, but I'm trying to, trying to, to, to get us on the road. This is what's your purpose in life. This is some pitfalls. So we're gonna talk about some pitfalls right now. Matter of fact, we're probably gonna talk about some what uh, here. Just keep that one you being in. If somebody needs one, hand them one. Okay. Okay. So, so we're gonna talk about some pitfalls. You gotta remember, uh, why you're on the road to your purpose is so easy to get caught up in pitfalls. Okay, I, I've been caught up in them. Y'all remember me talking Sunday about when they, when when, the, when uh, the Speed Channel, Mr. Fountain said, "Come here, David. I need you to do something for me." I said, "Why?" I said, "You take these people right here, and you're going to give them a tour that's going to be shown on worldwide television." And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm the one who are doing the tour, and they kept telling me to stand at the side and tell them. The reason I stood at the side is because they, they they took me totally out and let Mr. Fountain take my words. <laughs> Mr. Fountain used my, they made a script from what I said, gave it to Mr. Fountain, he read the script, and I was never even seen. You know, and so, uh, so that took care of, if there was any pride, that was shot down quick. Now, especially when I turned it on, I said, watch this, Lynn, the boys watch this. Daddy, Daddy's going to be on TV, and I'm at Power, Power Bus, I'm telling you all this stuff, and turn it on, and there's Mr. Fountain's voice. <laughs> and where's Daddy? He's over standing aside, and nobody can see him. Right. <laughs> Out of the camera's reach. So, but still, there's pitfalls, and God will take God will take care of your pitfalls. All right. So, so here we go. Let's pray first. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for this night. We thank you for all that you do for us and all that you're going to do for us. Help us, God, to see, to know, to understand what you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you, God, for that wonderful Emmaus weekend, the one that's coming up for the men. We also thank you, God, that you're. Uh, God, I already got a crop for the next time, Lord, in our church that's going to go. I thank you for that too, Lord. Prepare away in the name of Jesus we pray, and we thank you for it all. The church said? Amen. 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 You know, uh, uh, it's really funny because I got Wayne to carry the guys, and just before they got to the camp, Wayne, we already talked about it, but Wayne, Wayne went way up beyond. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, just put a bag over their head, uh -huh. like they're being taken to a special camp. Yeah. yeah, and he put a bag on here and drew faces on it. <laughs> and so when they get there, all the guys are in the van and they got bags on the head with faces on. That thing, pictures of that. Last time I was I was registering people and he said, "Come on, we gotta go, we gotta go." I said, "But, but brother, I'm having." He said, "No, you gotta go now." I said, "Okay." And we only had two people from our church. That day was Doug and who else was it? Doug, Doug and the guy. That, uh, I can't think of his name now. But there was two, two of them, and he had put, he had gone. And taken, uh, a, made a big old face, and put hook it to glasses, a big old face, and went and found a picture of me making a funny face, and took it and glued it to it that big. And they come riding up in a van with these glasses on. They didn't know what it was. They get out in the van, and they both look like me making a silly face, and the head is that big. So, so I mean, y'all ladies, y'all don't get to do anything fun like that. I know y'all do. Y'all get to do plenty of fun things. So, so uh, you, you will enjoy it. It's fun. It, it's, oh, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. It's fun, but it's also 
It's probably one of the most encouraging things I've ever done, and that's why I keep doing it, is because, and you can ask the people that, that do it behind the scenes, is it's more fun to be behind the scenes than it was to be in it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just keep getting lifted up and strengthened. Every time I get lifted up and strengthened. And it really does me good that Bethany, we didn't know that Bethany was going to be sick when she, this was her time to go. And so there was a lot of prayer going on for her. And after going to the doctor money and seeing how she acted so much different mm -hmm. and what the doctor said it was going to be like, you know, I, I just, I'm just holding on that, that, there's, that God's going to do something with that girl. Very strong. Okay, here we go. Characteristics. What's your purpose of life? Now remember, we're talking about Hitler and we're talking about Paul. And I'm just going to kind of read this stuff, and then we're going to stop, and then we're going to just camp out in places so we can talk. At one point, it appeared as if both men were headed for the same destiny, on one on the same course of corruption. Now, think about this. If you never thought about Paul, and thought of, see, see Paul thought he was, he was being led by religion, but by a religious spirit. But let me tell you something. Paul was also being led by the Antichrist. There's three kinds of, there's a Christian, there's a non-Christian, then there's an anti-Christian. The Christian, of course, they cling to the gospel, cling to Christ. The non-Christian could care less about anything. They don't hurt anybody, they're just, you know, hanging around. The anti-Christian, anti-Christ, they seek to destroy Christians. We work with anti-Christ people that's been driven by the spirit of anti-Christ. There's people in our family that's driven by the spirit of anti-Christ. Some are not on as high not on the highest level as others. There's different levels, but you can tell when you when you see this constant picking and probing and trying just to do their best to, to drive you away from it, that's the anti-Christian, the anti-Christ. So, Hitler was being driven by the spirit of anti-Christ, although he thought he was being driven by God. And the same thing with Paul. Hitler wanted to kill the Jews, and Paul wanted to kill the Jews who had become Christians. To kill the early church. He wanted to stop the impact of the church. He wanted the church to get out of the way so religion could stay in top. When, before, when Jesus came, Jesus came at a time when religion was at its height. And when religion was at its height, uh, God, only wrote, God only wrote so many laws and religion had added 10,000 laws over what God had already written. That's religion. Mm -hmm. If God said... Be careful when you climb on the mountain because if you fall off, you get hurt. Then the religion guys come in and say, well, don't even, don't, don't, don't climb up to the, or if you climb to the top of the mountain, don't climb to the edge. Then the next guy comes along and says, I can do better than that. Don't climb to the top of the mountain. The next guy comes along, the next group says, we can do better than that. Don't even climb up the mountain. Then the next, the next uh, group comes and says, don't even touch the mountain. That's religion. All God said was, when you walk in, be careful not to fall off the edge. That's it. And they got it all, and that's what had happened. They had messed up stuff so bad that people couldn't live it. So, again, Paul was trying to keep status quo, status quo. He was trying to keep uh, uh, in their comfort zone, the comfort zone of religion. So, uh, Paul drug them off to prison. He caused them to be killed. He caused families to be separated. He caused people to lose their jobs. Uh, he was just a bad bad man. He was so bad that when he got saved, the 12 apostles would not get around him. They would have nothing to do with him. So Barnabas had to go and take care of it because everybody was scared of him. They thought he was just coming in to find a way to hurt him. And they're God's number one men that wanted to be around him. And you tell me he was, he was a bad man. Okay? So now, Paul one day would find a better path and follow it and be forever changed. Hitler never found the path but history was forever changed because of what he did by killing those Jews. So, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Somebody talk, talk to me about that. Somebody talk to me. Well, it led to death for a lot of people, for both men. Mm -hmm. Why did Paul change? The road to Damascus. Yeah. Jesus knocked him. See, see you hear that? You, you, you come off your high horse. That's what happened. That's where they come from. On the road to Damascus, Paul got knocked off his high horse. And blinded. And blinded. Paul was the most powerful man in religion. He was the highest of all. He had attained this at a very early age. He was the. He was like at a. Just imagine 
uh, when when uh, Kennedy became president. Wasn't he one of the youngest presidents ever? Yeah. Have we talked about Certainly that? Youngest. Okay. Well, here's Paul. Paul was in the Sanhedrin, and and he rose to the top. He got so high up that he just wanted. To, he couldn't get enough of hurting people. He couldn't get enough of killing them because he was like a hitman. So what he did was he got letters, and the letters from the high priest said, "Now you can go, and you can take uh, 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 on the road to Damascus. You can go to Damascus. You got his letter. You can kill even more people." So he was hated by every Christian and hated even by the church. They were scared of him. Totally feared him. Yeah, totally. So, so it, but this is like in our own life. There's a way which seems right to a man, but the end results are, are, are the leads to death. How many times, let's, go, let's, go, let's think humanly now. Let's take Christ out of this, religion, all that out. We're not talking about spiritual, physical. Have you ever, you know, okay, I think about Steve Irwin. Okay, that man wrangled more animals, had done so much stuff, and so he thought he could grab this this stingray, and it got him right in the chest. Okay, so it was the way it seemed right to him. I can do this, and then it got him in the chest right through his heart. Right, the man the man was a bad to bone dude and done all this stuff all his life, so he thought he knew what he was doing. But in the end result, it killed him. How many people you know that? You know, I, I was I was at the hospital one day, uh, just a few months ago, and my old neighbor from Williamston, her husband was a deacon in the church and was studying to be a preacher, and he was just a little bit older than me. And I come up to, and I just saw her, and I was there. Linda's mama was there, I think, and I was there seeing Linda's mama and or my uncle Ralph or both of them and. And I see her, and I said, how's it going? And she says, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get better. And I said, uh, I didn't know you'd been sick. I'm sorry. You mind me asking what happened? And then she turns around and says, yeah. She said, no, I don't mind telling you at all. She said, you didn't hear? I said, no, I haven't heard. She said, my husband got killed. I said, what happened? And he was always a daredevil. He was always out doing things, you know, just crazy things. He had a motorcycle. He was trying to sell the motorcycle. She said he went out to the end of the road, going to just do like he always did, rear it up and do his thing to sell it. And when he reared it up, the wheels lost traction in some sand, and it just flipped over backwards, and his head hit the cement and killed him instantly. He was not wearing a helmet. You know, and so, you know, again... He thought he had it going on. He thought, and I always trusted him. I didn't like riding with him, but I always trusted him. I trusted him enough not to ride with him. <laughs> uh, it kind of reminds us a little bit of Bill Shavender. Bill Shavender. Yeah, he just jumped in the car and just was going to take off and squall tires and come back to the yard and never made it back. And he was going. He was going to a man. He was going to Emmaus walk. He, he was going to Emmaus walk because he just told me. He said, "You're not going to leave me when we get there, are you?" And I said, "No, I won't leave you, Bill." And so, even at his table, his table was set right in front of where I sat as a spiritual director. He said he was right there, and so I could talk to him any time. I'd be right there, close as y'all, or closer, so I could get to him. And I said, "Bill, I got you right there." He said, "Good," because I, I, you know, I, I want to go, but I'm still not sure. I said, "Well, Bill, you're right there." And on the day he was supposed to be going to the mass wall, I preached his funeral. You know, so, so you never know. You never know what's going to happen. But again, there's things that, again, there's things that you think is right that you've been doing all your life, and eventually it's going to catch up with you, and it will kill you. You know, some of the crazy things. But there's also spiritual things that does the same thing. There's a lot of folks think they got it going on. Think they can either play games with God, or uh, play religion, or. Uh, like banana Christians. I remember when DC was a baby, I couldn't get him to eat his cereal. So I put bananas in his cereal, trying to outsmart him. I'll get him to eat his cereal. I come back and I look at his plate and the bananas were. <laughs> cereal's still there. He <laughs> <laughs> picked out a bee, you know. And so I thought about it. there's a lot of banana Christians. They just take out the word, oh, that sounds good. I'll hold that one. But that one here, 
I don't like that one, so I'm not listening to that one. But, but I like that one, you know. And so, so again, and that that's a way which seemeth right to a man, but the end results leads to death. So, so whenever you're doing something, whenever you're, and especially if you ever get set in your ways, stop, look and listen. Stop, look at the word, listen to him. And God, am I doing this right? And then find somebody you trust that's spiritual. Don't go to somebody that has nothing to do with church and nothing to do with God, an anti-Christian or a non-Christian to find out information about Christianity. Go to a Christian, especially one that you know is seeking God, <coughs> and then find out because uh, I would hate to think there was, I can't think of, there was a football game, and it is uh, forever. The guy was named the wrong way from that time on, but it was a, a I think it was a college game. I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, he was he 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 recovered a fumble and started running, and he started out running all the people coming after him. Matter of fact, they even gave up running after him. He thought he was so awesome that they just gave up running after him. The reason they quit, and then finally, one of his own people tackled him before he went over the the line. The reason was they quit running after him is because he got disoriented, grabbed the ball, and ran the wrong direction. <laughs> He felt great. He felt, he's always been known for this now. And, and so I don't want to run the wrong direction. As a matter of fact, Paul even says, I, I, I keep my body under subjection. In other words, I give my own self a black eye. At least, I, having led others to Christ, I myself become a castaway. As in Corinthians, I become a castaway. That word castaway literally means to uh, run out of bounds. So I'd hate to think that I run all the way to the goalpost and I was out of bounds. Or we're going to already go post, and I ran the wrong way. So there's a way which seems right to a man. The end result leads to death. Hitler did not find it out. Paul did. That's the difference. It's like two thieves on the cross. You know, there's redemption in the middle. There's rejection over here, and there's repentance over here. The rejection says, well, hey, I don't care. Let him die. Repentance says, well, he, didn't, he didn't deserve this. Remember me, Lord. So just remember... In our own life, when, when, when you know, we see the little devil and the little angel, you better ask God, who, because uh, the devil's going to speak the loudest. Mm -hmm. And I was, sitting, I was sitting on the couch the other night, my belly started grumbling. And Linda said, what was that? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, was there bears out there? <laughs> and it went, <laughs> And she said, I said, I don't think it was me. She said, that had to be you. You know, of course, that was my, my, my belly was growling. But see, a lot of times our flesh is doing the same thing, is growling. And in order to hush it up, we feed it. Mm -hmm. There's a way which seemeth right to the man, but every result of the way it is. If you feed that flesh every time, you know, you're going to get in trouble. So enough said, that, that, that'll cover it. So Paul would have find a better path, follow it, and be forever changed. So here, so water roads to nowhere, and, it, and I'm glad you asked. Ready? I got some good stuff down here, and, and, and hopefully you're not on any of them, but if you are, this is enough to hopefully make you see it and turn around before it's too late. Uh, as a young man, Paul thought he was fulfilling the purpose, his purpose in life when he began to destroy the church. He thought he was doing God a favor. Can you imagine he's killing people, destroying the church? Didn't say he broke up little Tupperware parties in the fellowship hall. He killed Christians. Yes. Killed them. Had them killed. He lied about them. Got false witnesses for them. They were put in the arenas and fed to the lions and the tigers. And they were, they were put between chariots and pulled apart when they wouldn't repent or recant. And so, so again, Paul was a bad, bad man. That's why I believe when he said, I asked God to take this away from me, and he asked three times he didn't. He said, my grace is sufficient. I left that there so you wouldn't get big-headed. I believe part of that was he never could totally forgive himself for what he'd done. I really believe that. I believe he knows God forgave him. But I believe inside of him, he never really could forgive himself totally. Or at least the thoughts were always there. And so, but it kept him humble. 
He never got the big head because, because of where he came from. A zealous Pharisee in the early days of the church, he went house to house to find followers of Jesus Christ and imprison them. He stood by and watched while Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was stoned. And the Bible says that he held their coats and was consenting to his death. Wow. I mean, this is just some powerful stuff. But his fight against Christians ended when he saw <coughs> the risen Christ and his real purpose in life began. Still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, Acts 9 and 1, Paul was traveling to Damascus and was on the outskirts of the city when a light from heaven shot, flashed about him. And, and that's when Jesus, Jesus talked to him. And so Jesus showed that he wasn't just persecuting church because he said, Lord, Lord, who art thou? He said, I'm Jesus who thou persecutest. Wait a minute. He was persecuting the church. And Jesus says, no, you're persecuting me. So just remember, when somebody's messing on you about your Christianity or trying to get you to fall or trying to stumble you because you, you're a stand for Christ, remember not just coming against you, they're coming against the Christ in you. And remember this too. Listen carefully. When the devil comes against you, you know what he's trying to destroy? He's trying to first destroy the anointing on your life. He seeks the anointing. When the anointing is strong, he comes at you. That's why some Christians say, you ever mess with me? I reckon not. No, he ain't have to. He can leave you alone. You're just dangerous for him. You're just good for him if he leaves you alone. Because if you're not doing anything, but once the anointing starts coming on you, then he, 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 he senses that anointing. And Because the devil don't know everything. God does. The devil doesn't. The devil don't know everything that's going to happen in the future. All they know is some of it, but not all of it, like God does. So, the devil, in, in his finite wisdom, seeks the anointing. When he finds the anointing, he tries his best to destroy the anointing on your life. And then he tries to destroy the, 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 your, your, your hold on to God. Your hold to God. You're holding on to God. He tries to get you to release your hold. First he goes after the anointing, then he goes after your hold. And so you've got to remember that. So when he first starts coming at you, the reason he's coming at you is say, well, Lord, how come, how come, Lord, every time I leave the church and say, you know what, I'm going to be a better person this week, it gets harder. You know why? Because he's seeking the anointing on you. He's trying to destroy it. Because I can't do this without his anointing. I can't sit here and do this without his anointing. I definitely can't do a mass without his anointing. I, I, you know, there's so much I think about all during the day. And, and even this with Bethany. We have ministered to more people. And, and ministered to more people. I've given, out, I've given out pens. I've given out little Bibles. I've given out those crosses. You know, and, and, and talked to people. One lady, I tried to walk back into the to the, inf the, the where they were infusing Bethany, I tried to walk back in. The door was locked, and laid it to me. And I said, "I said, uh, can you open this door for me?" And she said, "I sure can." And she reached there with her card, and I said, "Oh, you got the key." <laughs> and she says, "Yeah." I said, "You can always know the person with the key can get something done." And she goes, "Uh huh." I said, "Like the one that says I got the keys of death, hell, and the grave." <laughs> and she went, "Woo! Come on now, brother." <laughs> Uh, okay, so so here we go. Now, when you talk about Paul, everybody in here knows somebody that's been bad and mean and tough and think there's something else. Somebody think the same thing. They ain't nothing. They're a bunch of wusses compared to Saul Sardis. Now, wait till you get into a prison. That's what Benny carried me in that cell block. I asked him. I asked him. Y'all think y'all bad. Y'all don't know nothing about being bad. Now, let's talk about some people bad. <laughs> See, I asked him. I asked the door. No, 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 no. Benny is our official breaking guy. So everybody comes into the prison and work with us. We put him with Benny first because Benny did it the very first time with just me and him. And we in that cell, and, and I'm a pretty big guy, and there was guys that made me look like I was... One boy about the size of that door. Yeah. Any way you want me. And we're sitting there, and I'm thinking, Benny's going to have something really strong because he's got wisdom and understanding, and he's got this maturity on him, so I don't have to worry about Benny. And as I'm sitting here, and I'm waiting on Benny first, and, and all of a sudden Benny says, Y'all think y'all bad? <laughs> I'm thinking, Ben, that's why they're in here. <laughs> he said, y'all ain't nothing. <laughs> he says, he says, he says, y'all a bunch of wusses. And I'm like, oh, Lord, Ben, you're going to get killed. <laughs> and I watched some guys start going. 
I don't like, oh God, Benny, please. I started, I started to go and say, just look, look, go. Go, 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 get Ben and go. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he, he, didn't, he didn't stop, he just kept going. And I saw the guy start going, and I'm thinking, Benny, and then, then look, then I went. <laughs> and then I said, I'm putting the Bible right here so they try to stand me, they can't, these can't get my heart. And Benny won't stop. I mean, they're getting madder and madder. Benny won't stop. And then Benny says, let me tell you about the baddest man. And that's Saul of Tarsus. And all of a sudden, the guy's went, huh? And he starts telling how bad Saul was. And then all of a sudden, now the guy starts going, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And when he gets through, the guy decides that door looked over at me, and he was standing about the other room over there. He saw me and went, Pastor! And I said, what? And he held his hands up. A Samoan guy. He was a small guy. He went running. And I didn't know whether to run. I didn't know what to do. So I just said, Lord, <laughs> you got this, Lord. Give me grace because strength's not going to uh, help. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's a good one. He picked me up and slung me around. And I'm thinking, good God, I'm dead. And I feel like a dog, a little, a little doll, and a dog picking that doll up and throwing it around. And he said, and he was throwing me around, and, he's, and all of a sudden, something's hit me, it's tears. And he goes, I love you, man, I love you, man. And I was thinking, thank you, man, thank you, man. He did make you feel small. Yes, he did. He did. He made me feel small, too. So, so but then Benny did that to me. So I said, every time somebody goes, I said, Benny, they're going with you, do it to them. <laughs> we had one didn't make it. That's right. That's what it never came. Benny got him good. You scared him off the first trip. The first trip. The first trip. Benny got him. Yeah, he refused to tell them that they hadn't ever been body slammed by a seven-year-old man. Better look out, but he was fixing to get by. And he turned and runs to that bell. Okay, so look. <laughs> In his fight against Christians, in enemies of Christ. Okay, so here we are. He's, he says, "You're persecuting. You're not. Pers you're not just persecuting the church. You're really persecuting me." So, once you think about that, when you're under, under the trial, remember, it's not just you. It's the anointing on you. It is the Christ in you. All right. So, in Acts nine fifteen, he says, "This man." Now, now, people are scared of him. He says, "This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, before the people of Israel." So Paul now now Paul is beaten for his beliefs. He's in prison for his purpose. He's in chains for all the choices that he made to serve God, and clearly he chose Christ. So now now again, do y'all know? And I tell people this in the prison all the time. They'll go, man, but I, I'm just stuck in here. And I go, hold on just a minute. And I pull out the scripture where Paul says, "I'm bound, but the word of God is never bound." And I said, "Do you realize first off that Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament?" And most of his writing was made was done from prison. So he wrote from prison. And one of the greatest books ever written, the book of Philippians, the book of joy, was not only was it written from prison, it was written while he was on a death watch. So he's waiting to die. And he says, Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. Wow. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Wow. And this man's getting ready to die. He never knows when they're going to get him either. He was killed in prison. Yes, he was beheaded. Yes. Okay, so here we go. Also, it brings out the greatest man in the Bible to me. Who's that? Ananias. Yeah. When he said, the Lord sent Ananias to take the scales off Saul's eyes. Mm -hmm. So I can see him right now. Lord. Do what? <laughs> That's right. I know who this is. Mm -hmm. They can kill me. That's right. That's right. Anyway. Well, his only, his, only 12, his only 12 guys wouldn't go. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's the road to emptiness now. now. Now, you may not be like Hitler, and you may not be like Paul. You may not have the spirit. Remember remember this now. There's three spirits in the world. There's the Christian spirit, the non-Christian spirit, and the anti-Christian spirit or the antichrist. The Christian spirit is those that believe in Jesus Christ. They hold Jesus to their heart. Uh, they believe. The non-Christian could care less. He's not going to hurt you. He could care less. Then the Antichrist, he does everything he can to bring you down. Think about on your job. You know, you know, you got you got all three of these on your job. 
okay? You've seen them, all right? So you know which ones are which. Now, now, so here we go. You may not get the Antichrist spirit in you, but I can tell you one thing. Satan's fighting you, and he's trying to fight the anointing on you, and he's trying to fight the new life in you. And so because he's trying to fight the anointing on you and the new life in you and your hold on Jesus for both, here's what happens. Pamela County mosquitoes out there fighting over the dogs, you hear? <laughs> yep. Okay, here we go. These roads always lead to emptiness. And I will give this to you, and then we're gonna, we can we can go. First, externally focused. Now this I, I have had to fight. I've had to fight them all. And if the truth be known, all of us have had to fight all of these. Just some of us have to fight some of them more than others. Okay? Externally focused. We're more concerned about our own outward appearance of success. Styling and profiling. People got to look at me and think I got it together. It's egotism. Everybody ever heard the word egotism? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like, uh, I think, who was it? It was uh, Will Smith said, people spend money they don't have to buy things they don't need to impress people they don't like. Mm -hmm. There's one friend of mine, he used to always get the stoplights. Friend of mine at work. He'd always get the stoplight. And he just thought he was God's gift to women. He'd get the stoplight and he'd just see the women looking at him and he'd go. <laughs> he'd come to work and tell me how he saw four or five women at the stoplight and he was going. And they were going. So one day he's doing that and the women keep smiling at him but they're not smiling like they want him. He's doing this, he's going. And the women are laughing at him. And he went down about four or five blocks, and the women are laughing at him at every stoplight. He's thinking, what have I done wrong? The women are laughing at me today. Normally they don't laugh, but today they're laughing. And he gets down a little bit further, and finally he looked at him just looking up in the rearview mirror. He didn't know it, but he was still wearing that white hairnet <laughs> <laughs> from work. And it looked like it was stuck out like a like a like an egghead behind it. <laughs> so he was he thought he was starting a profile and instead he was looking like a ninny. You know, I, I had a guy I work with that uh, I had a I found a sign that said caution empty. I couldn't stand it. So I wrote hid. Caution empty hidden put an arrow up. And it was so noisy in the control room, he couldn't even hear it when I walked up behind him and said, have a good day, brother. And I popped him on the back, brother, God's got something good for you today. <laughs> he was a Christian. <laughs> God's got something for a good day, and so did I. <laughs> and so he goes to play, pay some bills. And as he's going, he went to two or three stores, and people kept following him around the store. And he kept following him around the store. And finally, the last store he went in, they were falling around the store. And finally, he tried to look. It says, is there a problem? And it says, yeah, look at your back. And he reaches back there and pulls it and says, caution, he empty head and the air pointing toward his head. <laughs> and he said, David. <laughs> so the next day, I'm at the computer, and I'm going to still noise in the control room. He walks up behind me, and he sneaks up behind me, and he's got that sign. And he walks up behind me. He's on my back, and then he backs up a little bit, and he comes as, like he's behind me, way behind me, he goes, hey, brother, how you doing? And then he walks up to me, and he steps on the back. The only thing he didn't realize is I could see him in the screen. <laughs> 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 so when he walks away, I jump up and grab it off my back and put it on him again. <laughs> <laughs> and so he gets to walk, walk all in the plant doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. Eternally focused. Caring more about your outward appearance of success than you are about caring about God getting God's business done. Okay? Egotism. There is, that's one of the biggies, I think, with some of these, some people, some of these people that are, are carrying the gospel. They're more concerned about how they look carrying the gospel than they are about carrying the gospel. Okay? And that's sad. That's what's so cool about Emmaus. How many times you see it? Ladies, how many times you see a suit in Emmaus? Guys, how many times you see a suit in that Emmaus walk? You, did, you saw it each what? When the speaker got up. When the speaker got up. The only time a person, the speaker wore a suit. That's it. The speaker wore a suit, and he only wore it for that speech, and he come back down and changed back out. The whole time you're wearing, you're just wearing clothes. You're just wearing 
I mean, this, this is this is how I dressed for every Emmaus thing, except for sometimes I wore flip flops and sometimes I wore shorts. It all depends on how because sometimes Camp Caroline's hot, sometimes Camp Caroline's cold. Okay, all right. And so, it always rains on Emmaus. And it rains on Emmaus. That's right. Number two. That's what you think about these things when you're hearing me. When, when you're hearing these things, I want you to ask God to talk to you, the Holy Spirit to talk to you. And, and Holy Spirit, if I've got any of these in me, and remember, a gift or a talent that you may have, when it gets out of proportion, it is no longer a gift or a talent. Once it's out of proportion, now it becomes a curse. I'll explain. If my gift is the gift of helps, but if I take it out of proportion, and instead of helping you, I now take everything out of your hand, and I do everything myself, I'm hurting you, and I'm hurting myself. It's no longer a gift. It's a curse. Okay? <coughs> Think about the thing. Whatever God's given you as a gift, if you take it out of proportion... Or talent, once you take it out of proportion, now it becomes a curse. You've got to keep it in, got to keep things moving in the right direction. Second word, materialistic. Impressed with money and possessions, materialism. You know, there is a lot of people that get so tied up with this, they got to have the latest, greatest, the latest, greatest fad, blah, 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 blah. I found out if I save my ties after about five years, they come back in style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. ties. I ain't never seen. I wear them at a mass and funerals and weddings. Okay. Yeah, you did have one on top of it. Yeah, yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't want one. Okay. So, 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 God said He would bless us, but out of proportion, God blesses us to be a blessing. So, when God, if you, watch this, if you're blessed and you become a conduit for God's blessings, they come in you and out of you, your conduit, then that's awesome. But when that conduit is blocked, and now the blessings now I keep for me, 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 and I'm all talking about how can I look good and how can I take care of me, 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 now it's become materialism, and now it's become a curse because now I'm no longer a conduit. Now I'm just a puddle, and it's just being poured in me, and I'm not doing anything with it. Y'all know that why the Dead Sea is dead? Nothing can live in the Dead Sea. You know why? Because it has no tributaries. Everything goes in, nothing goes out. And because everything goes in, nothing goes out, nothing can live in it. It's got a high buoyancy. Alexander the Great took slaves. And when he crossed it, he threw them in it. He tied their hands together and threw them in it so he could sit hands and hands and feet so he could see them bounce. Okay, the high bullets, it's got a high mineral impact, but the whole thing is nothing can live in it because everything goes in and nothing goes out. You want to see the deadest person you know? Find somebody that's all going in and never goes out. They may look good, they may shine, but they're dead. Because God gives you to give to others. What else? Laodicea. Oh, Laodicea. I thought you were talking about somebody in here. You called her name. Yeah. Laodicea. Oh, Laodicea. I thought you were talking about. I, thought, I, was to see who, I was trying to see who you were talking about. No, not a who. That's, that's when they're dead on the inside, waiting down the outside. That's right. Both sides together. <laughs> that's right. Okay, you're right. I was playing with you. You're right, Laodicea. Okay. Now, he wasn't talking about anybody in here. I was just picking. All right. Pleasure seeking. Seeking happiness is your highest goal in life. And that's hedonism. But tell you something, God is not trying to make everybody happy. <coughs> okay? If he's trying to make everybody you know, happy, then we got a problem. I got a problem. You know what I'm saying? But my, I don't have happiness, I have joy. Happiness is from the root word, hap, root word for happenings. Happiness has to do with outside circumstances. Happiness is when everything's going my way and everything's... But joy, but it can be rocked, rocked all the time by the circumstances changing. Joy is based on a relationship, and that's on the inside, not the outside. Joy cannot be rocked. Okay? Joy is stable. And so, so again, it's a pleasure seeking. Then task-oriented. Uh, placing projects over people. Workaholism. 
I learned a long time ago. I remember when when I first started. Uh, uh, I was just like hanging out, period. And then once I started being given the given jobs to do and given projects, all of a sudden, I went from uh, working with the people to getting the job done, and I didn't care. And God did a work on me and let me know if I didn't take care of the people that were doing the job, then the job was going to be hurt. Not, not only that, but the people were going to be hurt. And so I learned a long ways now that I need a place. I don't need to place the project over the people. I need to push the people first. And you know what? At Fountain, we had a ball. We had an absolute ball, and we got a lot done. And we had fun because of that. Now, insecure. Pleasing people to gain acceptance. Here's one that people might have and not even realize what it is. Idolatry. If all my biggest thing is is to please people, I'm in trouble. You know why? Because I can't please everybody. You heard about the chameleon? You know what a chameleon is, the lizard that changes colors? You hear about him, he found a box of crayons, and he exploded. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to change all those colors, and he can't. You cannot please people. The Bible says, woe well, unto him that everybody said everybody likes him. You know why? Because that means he's a people pleaser. If everybody likes him. It's one thing to have a lot of people like you, but everybody... Everybody, that's impossible. I don't know of any person that everybody likes them. Okay? Now, negative. Oh, here's a good one. Negative. Dissatisfied, disinterested, bored, bitter. You're just a pessimist. You know, I, t I tell the story all the time. It is so funny, but it's the truth. You know, I'm not a pessimist at all. I'm an optimist. But, but one day... Something was going on, and I told Linda, I said, this ain't going to work. It's not going to work. And she said, you're the most optimistic person I know, and you're talking about it's not going to work. That sounds like pessimism to me. I said, no, it's not going to work. She says, what happened to Mr. Optimist? I said, okay then. I'm positive it's not going to work. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, you know. Look, let me ask you a question. If, you're, if your favorite bird is the buzzer. If your favorite song is the death march, if your favorite color is midnight black, you may be a pessimist, okay? You got to think that. Is your, and if your hobby is raining on people's parades, you may be a pessimist. You know, just because you don't do it like I do it, just because you don't believe like I believe, doesn't mean we can't work together. That's right. Just because we don't think alike. Because you know what? That's what gives that's what gives everything is power. Is by having all the people. Look, all of us are smarter than one of us. Amen. You heard somebody say, my way or the highway. Oh, I used to work with the man. You know, man you, know what, you know what Mr. Fountain used to say? Mr. Fountain said, he'd say, we said, it's not going to work, Mr. Fountain. He says, remember the golden rule. But, uh, he who has the gold makes the rules. Right. <laughs> and that was his favorite thing. So it was his business, and so he did what he did. Although, this is funny. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Fountain, Mr. Fountain, he won't turn this off. If you happen to see this, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's the truth. You were there. <laughs> Mr. Fountain was talking about getting married again. And so he, and we were talking, and he said about me doing the ceremony. So I, so I said, yeah. So I come up to him at Walmart, and I said, so you ready to get married? And he says, I'm not sure if it's time yet or not, but I want you to do it. I said, all right. And so his fiance is standing there. And we walk up, and he goes, this is David Lynch. She says, I know David. She says, he wants to do our wedding. And so he says, tell her why you want to do our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> And so I said, well, you know, Bill was your best friend, Bill Shaver. He says, yeah. I said, well, I buried Bill. I want to bury you, too. <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at me real funny, but his, 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 his girlfriend laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Fountain, but he wouldn't cut it off. So he talked to Eddie, Ed, Eddie Edwards <laughs> yeah. from Edward, North Carolina. I used to work for Jerry Kuchel. Yeah, he used to work for Jerry Cuthram. Yeah. Um, you mentioned buzzard a while ago. Mm -hmm. There was this buzzard got on an airplane, had two dead rats.
And so, and one of the people there stopped and said, "Sorry, one carrying per passenger." <laughs>
Five minutes. She showed me. It was there. That's really scary. Right. So now, so now because of that, I just can't go up and tell somebody when the state asks, well, what's your credential? Well, I'm ordained in the church of God. And they go, and? Well, I was ordained on the computer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Or you're, you're, no, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, it means very little. So, so and and I can I can look at places, tell you right now, where you can get your high school diploma, you can get a bachelor's degree, you can get a master's degree, and a PhD. You can get all of them for about $40. Do they not check that? Most, some places really would, wouldn't they? Yes, but if I just wanted to impress you, I could put them oh, on the wall oh, behind oh. me. Oh, yeah. And look, Purdy, when the state comes in, they're going to check it. And if they need you or something, like when the state come in because they wanted me to help with some things in the community, uh -huh. and they checked the credentials, they were checking. They want, they checked everything I gave them. They checked it. You know. And, and so if I'd, if, I'd, if I'd have thrown some up like that, they'd have called it. I'll be a retired three-star general from the Army with, with the pension to go with. Well, you might not get the pension, but you can get the three-star general. Yeah. Because there's guys right now that say that they were, they were prisoner of war, and there's guys out that say they were in the special forces, and they're veterans of foreign wars, and they no more have done it than. Well, well how do you know, help them if they're um, people find out about it? Oh, it's been bad. People going to jail for that. Does that mean that's not your Navy SEAL getting out as police officer? Yeah, yeah, you can do all kinds of things. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Ready? Now, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. And that word fool, let me tell you something about that word fool. That word fool means empty head. So there's more, there's more hope for a man that's empty headed than for somebody that's wise in his own eyes. Wow. When I think about that, sometimes I'm thinking, you know, uh, it's like I, when I was up, like in the mass, I'll sit down with my buddies, my other preacher buddies, and we'll sit down together, and and when we go, we get things going on, and things have to be done, and things happen. We all get together. We're from all different denominations. We sit down together. We throw denominations out the window, and we let the commonality be the Bible and the blood of Christ. Okay, and. Uh, and and we do things and we handle it in a way that we try to be pleasing to God, not pleasing to the Church of God, not pleasing to the Church of Christ, you know. And there's one thing in the mass is a lot of people from the original Free Will Baptist Church. And if there was a while there when they got it, people said they were from ever. They said they were from the original ever Christian church. <laughs> <laughs> I think we started that on Bible. Yeah, yeah, the original ever Christian church. It was funny, man. It was funny. All right, and of course. There's a way that looks harmless enough. This is a translation of up here. There's a way of life that looks harmless enough, but look again, it leads straight to hell. That ain't good. No. No. And so, uh, you know, I, the more I learn, what I've discovered is the more I learn, it seems like the less I know. <laughs> because there's so much out there. And we're, no matter... No matter how much you learned, there was one guy who decided he was going to kill himself on a certain day because he had learned everything there was in a, everything. And so he was determined he was just going to kill himself. There's nothing else to learn. Delusional. Yeah, yeah. And so he stands up, he's getting ready to get ready to commit suicide, and the guy walks up and says, what are you doing? He says, I already know everything, nothing else to learn, so I'm going to kill myself. And as he's getting ready to kill himself, the man said, wait, 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 you're doing that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows him another way, and he goes, Hey, I don't have to kill myself after I don't know everything. <laughs> you try to learn something new every day. That's right. Some days you learn what to do, and some days you learn what not to do. See, and see, it's wise. See, it's wisdom, Benny, is, is what I had to learn that was every day I don't just learn what to do, I can also learn what not to do. And some of those is painful. Very painful. Yes. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. Them you remember. You're supposed to learn from like that. Some people don't. Yeah. That's right, Vicky. You're right, Vicky. You know, and if you don't learn from your mistakes, you keep making them. If you, if you learn from them, this a lesson well learned, and it's burnt into you, just like Sunday time. God's sealing the deal. You know, uh, again, heartache and trouble sometimes is God sealing the deal. Right. All right. Any questions? Any comments? You talking about that?
these people don't learn from their mistakes. I mean, we go sometimes to the detention center one month, and then we miss a month, and somebody's out back in in less than a month. Yeah. In and out, in and out, in and out. I had a guy that I went, I, I, he went to high school the same time I did, and he told me seven times he was never coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> seven times he's not coming back. What does that mean? He didn't learn yet. He didn't learn yet. But the sad part was, I quit going over in general population. I started going over in the federal side. And if I, I've been over in the federal side now for six months to a year. And I walk in one day and I see this guy in there. And I said, He sure looks familiar. And I walked up to him and I realized who he was. And I said, Oh, number eight. He said, yeah. I said, I weren't coming back. He said, I did not come back over to that side. <laughs> now I'm over on this side. You know, it, 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 think about this. This is not to make you feel bad at all. This is to make you feel good. Because it, it, if this is what you're striving for, you're always going to wind up empty. Always. But if this, but if you, this remember, in balance, in proper balance, you, you need to think about some of the things on the external. You need to think about material. You need to be, be hey, you can have some pleasure. You need to be task oriented. You don't need to be insecure. You definitely don't need to be negative. You, and there's sometimes that you do need to escape reality by just going to a movie or going sitting in the park and watching watching children play and uh, uh, status seeking. Now we went to see. I can only imagine. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. That's the name of the movie I want to go to. So that, 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 that thing you can only imagine. It's in Washington. Can you take a bucket of chicken in there to look at it? Nobody will say you'd be a bucket of popcorn. You wouldn't look at a bucket of chicken versus the movie? Why well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, not You can't bring food in. The way, the way you have to bring food in is you have to stuff it in your coat. Oh, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> What's the name of the movie? I can only imagine. Now, there's one thing they didn't. I want to, let me let me clarify something about that movie. If y'all haven't seen, it, you're gonna see it. His daddy was a very mean, mean man. His daddy was. He called him a monster. One thing he doesn't tell in the movie that he tells in interviews is that the reason his daddy his daddy didn't used to be that way. His daddy was a hometown hero. His daddy was a football star. Everybody loved him. He was he was an awesome athlete. Had an All American, but he got in a in a car wreck, or he was a truck driver or something, he got in a truck wreck or some kind of wreck, and he was in a coma. And when he came out of the coma, he became this monster. So so he just weren't always that monster. It was from a wreck, okay? They don't tell that in the movie. They just kind of go right into it, okay? So so when you see the man, just to cut him a little slack, he weren't all that, always that way, okay? But that movie is a tearjerker, and that movie... Will will it'll wind your clock, okay? Because you'll see yourself in it somewhere. You can't help but see yourself in it somewhere. Sean Hannity was one of the producers of that movie. Well, wow. yeah. What was cool was he wrote when that man wrote that song. He they were trying to find somebody famous to sing it. Amy Grant was looking for somebody to looking for a new song to put her back on the charts, and she loved that song, and so she was going to do it, and she was going to. Star case it in, a, in at a, at a at one of her where she was going to come back on the road and she's going to star case it and he's sitting out in the congregation the guy that wrote it from I mean from uh, Mercy Me and the reason they called it Mercy Me is because his his uh, his neighbor every time he would do something she got Mercy Me oh, Mercy Me and he said I'm gonna be a singer she said Mercy Me <laughs> and, uh, so that's where Mercy Me come from but but Amy Grant was getting ready to sing the song. And, and she just couldn't do it. And she said, this guy here wrote this song. And said, Mark, come on up here. This is your song. You sing it. And, and, and he just and he sings it. It's just so awesome. The song is one of, the, it was, it's been, it's one of those songs that has been recorded in, in rock. It's been recorded in country, southern gospel. It's been recorded in contemporary. It's been recorded in all genres. And all, everybody wanted to get their hands on it. It's one of the most requested songs in the world. You know, but, but when he sings that song, it's very, very, very powerful. Uh, but if you have, if you if if you want to go see a good movie that's just a wholesome movie that'll make you think and it'll teach you something, go watch that movie. You know. And then if you don't want to watch that one, go watch Star Trek. 
<laughs> okay, everybody, everybody's mind clear. Remember, this is not to beat you up. This is to help guide you to not get over into that area. Don't cross the fence. As long as you don't cross the fence, you're all right. Right? Our hearts and minds clear. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for tonight. Minister my to us and through us, Father. And, and Lord, help us learn, Lord, to, to, to embrace our strengths. But when the strength gets out of proportion, it becomes a weakness. When a gift gets out of proportion, it becomes a curse. Lord, help us embrace the strength without going overboard with it. In the name of Jesus we pray. The church said? Amen. 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 If I can get up. Are you still working? No,